For this final video in this session, we are going to take a look at finding a standard deviation from a frequency table. Now, here's a sample set of ages from a fifth grade class with a given average of 10.525 or 10 and 525 thousandths of a year. Now, a lot of this has been filled out for you already. Notice that you have some ages of 9, 9.5, 10, 10.5, 11, and 11.5. So, since we don't actually have the actual data points, notice that they are giving us frequency, just like we did on that midpoint chart a while ago. We are going to have to do a little bit of work with this equation. So you'll notice that this problem here, I didn't give you an equation at the top of the page. So follow along on this. So when you have a data table like this, you can then finish it up and then do your homework or paper pencil project. So let's do this problem here. We're going to take our average, and what's cool about this is that we have the averages already filled out here. So this being a longer problem, I've saved you a couple steps here. You're gonna subtract this 10.525 from the nine. Now you'll note that this is a little different than on the last table, but it really just means that subtract them and then take the positive value of it, which is another way of saying I can subtract them in any order I'd like. So I'm gonna go big minus small and take the positive answer, which will be positive if I go in that direction, with one and 525 thousandths. Now I'm gonna subtract this from the 9.5, so this gives me one and 25 thousandths. Subtract this from this, which gives me 525 thousandths. This from this, which is pretty close, just 25 thousandths. And I want to put a little star here, because that's going to be very important as we move to this table. Then this from this, which again, if I go this value minus this value, I'd get a negative. But we're going to only assume the positive value, so 475 thousandths and then 975 thousandths here. Now we're gonna square the deviation. Now the square key again is that, um, I, I didn't show it to you on the last video and I, I do apologize for this. Let's get that calculator up here. So if I go 1.525, the best square key is right there above the log key. Just right there, click that, click that, and that gives you that number squared. And I'd like to stick to three decimals if I could. So let's go back here, and that three decimal is 2.326. Let's take a look at the calculator one more time. There you go, 2.326. And I rounded the five to a six, because five or above, give it a shove. Four and below, let it go. So I'm gonna, now another way you could do this, I could go 1.025, and instead of hitting the little square button, I could use the caret key and put the two in the corner. And that gives me 1.051. And I'm going to round that up to a 1 because that's 6. Again, just push that up a little bit. This is where I like to see all your work because if your answer starts to stray away from what it should be and I can see all your work, then I, you know, know how you did there. So I'm going to square the point 525 or the 525 thousandths and get 276 thousandths. Now let's square this number. This one, boy, does it confuse people. So I'm gonna go 0.025 or 25 thousandths and I'm gonna square it. And it doesn't matter which key I use to square it, I get this. And you might say to yourself, 6.25? <laughs> what the crap? It, it honestly is a scientific notation problem. So remember this, 6.25 E negative four. I'm going to make a side note here, 6.25 E negative 4. Now, your book is going to assume that you remember scientific notation. I know you've probably forgotten it because it's been a while since, I don't know, uh, maybe you had it last in physical science or your chemistry class. So this is when you have 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4 which means you're gonna take that decimal and move it four spaces to the left. So the six, two, five, that decimal goes one, two, three, four. So there's the decimal, and that's 0. 0.000625. 
So the decimal is 0. 0.0006, and we can stop writing decimals because the standard rounding procedure for a scientifically um, small number is that you write only the first number after uh, your first not only write the first non-zero number. So if you add, if you put the two five at the end, it's going to be so small it's not going to have a, a mathematical effect on the problem. So let's just try to keep it as small as we can. So again, six point two five e negative four is like six point two five times ten to the negative four, or point triple o six two five after you move the decimal four spaces to the left. And yeah, some people out there might think, well, is it always one fewer decimal or one fewer zero? Um, then the number in the corner, and it's true, it's always one fewer because you're moving it to the left away from the first whole number. All right, whoo, little, <laughs> that was a tangent, wasn't it? Well, it's been a while since you've had scientific notation. Let's do this one. 0.475 squared is 0.226, and 0.975 squared is 0.951, or 951 thousandths. Now, the next step, now usually we were done with this, right? We just add all these up and then finish our standard deviation. But in this case, we have to add this little frequency part to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 2.326 and multiply it by 1. So 1 times 2.326 is just 2.326. Then the frequency over here is 2 times 1.051. So we're taking this column, this deviation squared, notice how it's here, see? And we're multiplying it by the frequency here. Okay, so frequency times deviation is this column times this column. It's nice that you can keep all this in front of you, right? Ah, that's what I love about just having this stuff right in front of you. 2.102. And then we have the 4 times the 0.276, which is 1.104. And here we have our 4 times times 0 0.0006, which is 0 0.0024. And then we have 6 times 0 0.226, which is 1.0024. Three five six, and then finally we have three times point nine nine fifty one, which is two and eight hundred fifty three thousandths. Okay, good job, everybody. Thanks for sticking with it because now we are going to add up the sum of those square deviations. So everything in this column that I just maybe scrolled down a little too fast for. Everything in this column, this 2.326, so let's change colors here. All these green numbers need to get added together. And I've done that for you. <laughs> so I've done that for you. I've got 9 point... How far did I go? It looks like I went 4 decimals. And the reason why I went 4 decimals is because this gave us the 4th decimal. And then we will divide the sums by n minus 1, which gives us our variation and we'll talk more about variation later, which is gonna be 0.513, because I divided by, now here's the thing, if I add up all these numbers, I get an n equal to 20. That's 3, 7, 11, 17, 20. So I divide this number by 19 to give me this number here, the 0.513, or 513 thousandths. Now again, we only had 20 data points, and if we had 30 or more, we would not have divided by n minus 1. We would have divided by n. But then if I take the square root of 513 thousandths, I get 0.72, which is my standard deviation of x. I found it. Let's draw a picture. So we're trying to find these ages in this fifth grade class, and we have a normal curve. And the most normal of normal people is going to be 10.5 years old. But we're going to add a little bit more to that. And then we're going to go to this normal standard deviation away from the norm. 
And we're going to add 0.72 to this, which gives us 11.245. And then we add another 0.72 to get us our two standard deviations away from the norm, which gives us 11.965. We're going to go one standard deviation below the norm, two standard deviation below the norm. And if I subtract 0.72, this gives us an answer of 9.805. And this gives us an answer of 9.085. Got to be careful there. The difference is quite drastic. So what story does this tell us? Well, if we're looking at this, this sample of fifth grade ages, it's normal for kids to be around 10 and a half. But it is not weird to have students that are a little bit into their 11th year or at the very end of their ninth year. What is weird is anything beyond these first standard deviations above and below the norm. Forgot my little below there. So if you are over 11 years and a few months in your fifth grade year, that's a little weird. Also, if you're in the middle of your ninth year and you're in the fifth grade also weird so that's what standard deviation does based on a normal distribution where more of the normal there's more normal people than not this is a unimodal picture here this is really explaining that hey 10.5 is normal 12 and 9 and eh, not so much Excellent, everybody. Thank you for finishing a complicated frequency deviation chart to finish your standard deviation problem.